the organism show different type of responses to the environment. So, accordingly there are four different types of responses to the habitat you already studied which include regulate. So, regulate is a phenomena wherein the organisms maintain their body temperature osmotic concentration constantly though the environmental temperature and osmotic concentration changes. So, in other words the organisms which can maintain homeostasis are called regulate. The second type of response is conform. Most of the amphibians fishes they keep changing their body temperature osmotic concentration according to the ambient environment. They are called conformers and the phenomena is called conform. And particularly the migratory birds shows a different type of response to the harsh environmental conditions which include the migration. When the environmental conditions are not suitable they migrate to favorable conditions and return back when the favorable season arrives that is called migration. But even some other organisms particularly the lower organisms like algae they suspend their physiological activity during unfavorable conditions called as a suspend. So, you already understood these are the four different ways the organisms respond to the habitat or environment. Based on this let us take one question. Kialado National Park is situated at and is famous for. So, this is a particular national park present in Bharatpur, Rajasthan. During the winter season there are lot of migratory birds migrate to this national park from Siberia and other colder regions. Let us see the options. Option A Gir Gujarat lion. So, lions are the native species they are present in the Gir national park. The Ranthambore national park there is a tiger reserve. In Bharatpur Rajasthan receive lot of birds from colder regions like Siberia and Hazari Bagh present in Jharkhand it is for tigers. Now, the correct option in this particular question is C that is Bharatpur Rajasthan receive lot of birds from Siberia and other colder regions. Students when we go to higher altitudes generally we experience uh, these type of symptoms like uh, nausea, fatigue, heart palpitation, fainting, sweating etcetera. These are some of the symptoms that we experience in higher altitudes due to low oxygen density. So, to compensate the low oxygen density what our physiological function will do we increase our RBC count, we decrease the oxygen binding ability of hemoglobin and also we increase the breathing rate. That is why people living in higher altitudes particularly like in hilly areas and all that they will have high RBC count. Based on this concept let us take up one question. Altitude sickness includes nausea, fatigue and heart palpitations due to high atmospheric pressure at high altitudes. When we go higher and higher in the higher altitudes atmospheric pressure decreases so also oxygen density. Option B is low atmospheric pressure at high altitude. 
option C is high mountain height and high temperature. Option D is heavy snowfall at high altitude and low temperature. In this particular question, the option is very, very simple that is option B because when you go to higher altitudes, the atmospheric pressure decreases, so also the oxygen density. So, we experience several symptoms like nausea, fatigue and heart palpitations and hence the correct option for this question is B that is low atmospheric pressure at high altitudes. In a competition between two species, one species is called superior competitor and other one is called inferior competitor. According to gas competition exclusion principle, in the habitat the superior competitor exclude the inferior competitor, but this is not the case in all the habitats. But in some habitats what happens? Both the competing species for the same resources coexist by partitioning the resources called as resource partitioning. Based on this concept, uh, let us consider one question. MacArthur observed that 5 closely related species of warblers living on the same tree able to avoid competition and coexist due to the first option A, cooperation in their foraging efforts. There is a proper coordination and cooperation among all the 5 species of warblers in sharing the resources. Second option is the behavioral differences in their foraging activity, the collection of food foraging activity is different in different species of 5 types of warblers. And option C is different types of insects they eat. This is also one of the adaptations the warblers have each species of warblers eat different types of insects. And option D is all the above. In this particular question, the 5 species of warblers use all the 3 different mechanisms to coexist in resource partitioning and hence the correct option is the option D all the above. As you all know, age pyramid is a graphical representation of the individuals in a population with rep respect to reproduction. So, in any population, there are three individuals with respect to the reproduction one is pre reproductives, reproductives, post reproductives. With the number of individuals of three different groups are represented in a graph, it assumes a pyramid shape that is called age pyramid. Now, age pyramid of a population indicates whether the population is stable, declining or expanding and it also indicate whether the population has competitors, predators or if the pesticide that we apply is effective. So, based on this concept, let us see one question which are the following type of age pyramid reflects a stable population growth. The option A include triangular shape, option B is bell shape, option C is urn shape, option D is both bell shaped and urn shaped. Now, let us see the age pyramids now to understand the different shapes. Let us come back to the stable population. In a stable population, the pre reproductives, reproductives are of same size that means same number, but 
the post reproductives are lesser. So, this type of stable population represent bell shape. Whereas, in case of declining population, there are lesser number of pre reproductives, higher number of reproductives and even lesser number of post reproductives and this assume a vessel shape also called as urn shape. Whereas, in expanding population, the pre reproductives are more comparing to the other age groups. Let us see the options now. Option A is triangular shape. The perfect triangular shape generally is obtained in expanding population wherein pre reproductives are more comparing to reproductives and post reproductives. In a bell shaped, in bell shaped population the pre reproductives and the reproductives are of same size or a number. In case of urn shape, the pre reproductives are lesser comparing to the reproductives and hence in this question, which are the following type of age pyramid reflects a stable population growth. As you already know, the stable population growth always assume the bell shape and hence the correct option is option B the bell shape. Students, let us take up uh, one question from population interactions. So, in these questions, Connell's field experiments related to barnacles in which Balanus dominates the intertidal area and excludes the Chathamalus from that zone. This phenomena is called as. Now, when you have barnacles, the larger barnacles are called Balanus, smaller barnacles are called Chathamalus. And these larger barnacles whenever they are present, they exclude the Chathamalus from the habitat. So, the larger barnacles that is barnacles, balanus are superior competitors and the Chathamalus is the inferior competitor. So, this type of competition was observed in intertidal area by Connell's field experiment. Let us see the options now. Option A competitive exclusion principle. So, this principle was given by Gauss. According to this principle, when two species sharing the same resources existing in the same habitat, one is called as a superior competitor and other is called as inferior competitor. When the superior competitor is present, it excludes the inferior competitor. Option B is competitive release. In this case, when the superior competitor is removed from the habitat, the inferior competitor flourishes and develop more. Coexistence, in coexistence when two species sharing the same resources by part resource partitioning so that they can exist in the same habitat by sharing the resources. Competition between unrelated species and in this case these two are not unrelated species, but they belong to the same genera, different species, but they are related species. In this question, the superior barnacles that is balanus dominates the inferior barnacles that is chathamalus and hence the correct option is competitive exclusion principle, A is the correct option. in a prey predator population, in case of animals, the prey animal run away from the predator. But in case of plants, the plants cannot run away, instead 
they undergo morphological and biochemical adaptations to prevent the predators. When you consider morphological adaptations, plants might develop thorns or spines so that to prevent the herbivores eating upon them. When it comes to the biochemical adaptations, most of the insects are feeding upon the plant, feed upon the sap. So, sap eating is called phytophagus. So, to prevent the insects eating upon the plant, the plant produces several biochemicals which include the quinine, opium, glycosides, etc. Based on this concept, let us consider one question. Cattle or goats never browse on calotropis. The options are option A, poisonous glycosides. Option B, alkaloids like quinine. Option C is opium. Option D is long chain fatty acids. In this particular question, these option B and the C also alkaloids which make the predator population sick, cause indigestion and even make them weak. But in this particular context, the calotropis produce the poisonous glycosides are also called cardiac glycosides to keep the cattle or goats away from the plant. So, in this question, the correct option is A, poisonous glycosides. The population density is generally is measured in terms of the number of individuals present in a population at a given period of time, but it is not necessarily for all the habitats. So, based on this concept, let us look one question. Read the following statements and select the correct option with respect to population density. The first one is the population density is necessarily measured in numbers need not be in numbers. In case for example, a one banyan tree and 400 parthenium grass. In this case, the ecological benefit of one banyan tree or else the biomass of one banyan tree is far more than the biomass of the parthenium grass. In this case, the biomass of banyan tree is considered as the population density rather than 400 parthenium grass. The second one is the tiger census is often based on pug marks and fecal pellets. And here in this case, the number of tigers present in a particular habitat, it is uh, difficult to identify. In that case, the tiger census or tiger population generally considered in terms of the pug marks and the fecal pellets. The third one is the biomass is not a meaningful measure to know population size. Biomass is a meaningful measure as I said earlier comparing to the banyan tree and the 400 parthenium grass. The fourth one is the number of fish caught in a trap is a relative density. It is the correct one because in the pond the total number of species of fish can be identified based on how many number of species of fishes are caught in the fish trap? Let us look at the option now. So, in these four uh, options, the option 2 is the correct one because the tiger census is always considered in terms of pug marks and the fetal pellets. And also, the fourth one, the fish population in a pond is considered depending on the number of fishes caught in a trap, it is also called relative density, and hence. The correct option is the D that is 2 and 4. Decomposition is a process wherein 
The dead organic matter like detritus is converted to minerals that will be added to the soil to increase the fertility. So, the process of decomposition requires several suitable conditions. One of the most important conditions are the detritus rich in nitrogen compounds, sugar, warm temperature, moisture, aerobic condition etcetera. Based on this concept, let us consider one question. So, build up of organic material in soil is under which of the following conditions? First option A, lesser temperature that is 10 degree temperature, absence of oxygen. Option B, warm temperature, humid denouement. Option C is aerobic conditions, temperature above 25 degree centigrade and nitrogen rich detritus optimum moisture. As I already told you, the conducive environment for decomposition process are aerobic conditions, warm temperature, moisture, nitrogen rich soil and also the detritus rich in sugar component. In this particular question, the option A is the correct answer because lesser temperature, anaerobic condition that is absence of oxygen result in piling of organic matter in the environment and hence the correct option is A that is lesser temperature about 10 degree centigrade and absence of oxygen. The ultimate source of energy in the planet is solar radiations, sunlight. The total solar energy that enters into the atmosphere is about 50 percent. So, out of 50 percent of solar radiations that enters into the earth atmosphere, part of it is absorbed by the plants during photosynthesis and this 50 percent of solar radiations available for the plants is called photosynthetically active radiation. So, based on this concept, let us see one question. What percentage of PAR can be captured by plants? So, the earth atmosphere gets 50 percent of solar radiations, out of it part of the solar radiations are captured by the green plants during photosynthesis. Option A include 1 to 5 percent, B is 2 to 10 percent, option C is 20 percent and option D is 50 percent. So, option A the traces of solar energy that is also absorbed by the plants, but the correct option for this question is option B 2 to 10 percent solar radiations absorbed by the plants during photosynthesis. Any ecosystem consists of two components, structural components and functional components. The structural components include biotic and abiotic components. The functional components include the productivity, decomposition, energy flow, nutrient cycling etcetera. Based on this, let us take up one question. The amount of inorganic substances present in an ecosystem is dash energy flow is a dash feature of ecosystem. Let us see the options. Option A is standing crop and the structural component. Standing crop is the amount of bioenergy or the biomass present in the biotic community and structural component include biotic and abiotic components. Option B is standing state. The standing state is the amount of mineral nutrients that is present in the soil at any given period of time. As I already told you, standing crop is the biomass present in the biotic community at any given period of time. Now, 
Let us look at the correct option now. The question is amount of inorganic substances present in an ecosystem is standing state that is the number amount of mineral nutrients that is always present in the soil at any given period of time is standing state and the energy flow is a functional component of ecosystem and hence the correct option in this question is the standing state and the functional component is the energy flow in the ecosystem. Dear students, we have discussed few questions from the unit ecology. I suggest you take more questions from different sources and work it out. All the best. Mm -hmm.